Over at the White House, the flag is at half mast. It was just ten minutes to six tonight when the news was given to the world. The first reaction among troops was complete disbelief. Everywhere there was the silent tribute to the passing of a great leader. A war casualty as certainly as any soldier killed in battle. On April 12, 1945, President Franklin Roosevelt is at his retreat in Warm Springs, Georgia, recuperating from exhausting travels overseas. At one o'clock in the afternoon, FDR collapses in his living room. By 3.35 p.m., America's longest serving president is dead. The world paused in uncertainty for a few moments today when the news was given to the world that President Roosevelt had slept away. News that stunned and suspended in immobility for minutes, the whole country, the whole world. Millions of men and women stopped stock still unbelieving. Under ordinary conditions, it would be exceedingly difficult to absorb. Although rumors of Roosevelt's deteriorating health had persisted for over a year, his sudden death stuns the nation and leaves the fate of the war uncertain. The greatest casualty of the entire world is now suffered by all the people of the world. National Broadcasting Company humbly ask admission to your home in this our hour of national sorrow. Crowds are lining Constitution Avenue from here to the White House. Many an American is standing with us today. All the soldiers and servicemen in the crowd stand firmly at attention. And now the caisson will start its solemn, sorrowful procession through Washington. On April 14th, 1945, America bids farewell to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt the man who has led the country for the past 13 years. At a time like this, words are inadequate. The world knows it has lost a heroic champion of justice and freedom. In his infinite wisdom, Almighty God has seen fit to take from us a great man who loved and was beloved by all humanity. For the past four years, President Roosevelt steadfastly guided America through the war. During his presidency, the Allies have succeeded in containing the infectious spread of Hitler's armies and are now closing in on Berlin. In the Pacific, American forces have pushed the Japanese out of the Central Pacific and are now within striking distance of Tokyo. But there is still fierce fighting ahead, and now it is up to the inexperienced Harry S. Truman, Roosevelt's vice president for only 82 days, to lead the country to final victory. Tragic fate has thrust upon us grave responsibility. We must carry on. Our departed leader never looked backward. He looked forward and moved forward. That is what he would want us to do. That is what America will do. 